Hey guys, Corey here. Today I want to talk to you about push notifications in React Native using Firebase Cloud Messaging. Push notifications, unfortunately in React Native, this is not a trivial topic. There is a lot of complexity uh, around push notifications. Uh, Firebase Cloud Messaging does make it a lot easier and simpler to use. And the documentation is great but it is very, very overwhelming. There's a lot of things going on with device tokens, server-to-server -server communication. And um, when I was initially going through it, I found it very overwhelming. So I just wanted to walk through a few diagrams that really simplifies this entire process. And, and it, hopefully it can give you a, a strong understanding of exactly how this operates. Now today I'm just going over the theory. I'm not going to show you any code. I'm going to save that for a late, later video. Uh, so uh, hopefully you just understand from a theoretical foundational perspective of how these push notifications are working. Now when you're sending a push notification, most of the time it's going to come from your application server. Typically there's some sort of business logic such as the new message or a new match on Tinder, for example, um, something like that would occur that would end up triggering a push notification. Now, what's important to know about requesting a push notification is that you're going to need to have this thing called a device token. Uh, this device token is how Firebase Cloud Messaging identifies your device. And, it, and so it knows where to send the message to. So it needs to have that uh, when you're sending a message. The message could also come from a uh, tool called Firebase Cloud Messaging Console. Uh, this is something that's on the Firebase Console. It's pretty easy to use. You can just manually type in a message that you can send via push notification. And it also has great tools such as uh, analytics, um, and you can do A-B uh, testing as well straight through the FCM console, which is pretty nice. Uh, but regardless of the channel, um, the request is sent to the Firebase Cloud Messaging Server. What Firebase Cloud Messaging Server does is it encapsulates a lot of complexity around the iOS and Android push notification servers. Uh, these servers, if you were to try to send a request to these individually, is a real big pain in the rear. There's a lot of crap you have to do, and it just it's it's a lot it's a huge headache. So FCM really encapsulates a lot of this complexity, which is great. Um, so it identifies whether that device token comes from an iOS device or an Android device, and then it will route the message and the token to uh, one of these servers based on uh, operating system, and these servers will then push out the message to your devices. Um, so uh, that's how it works from a high level. So now we're going to look at token registration. This is essentially the process of getting the device token. And Firebase Cloud Messaging makes it really simple to do. Uh, when our user's device launches our app, we can issue these methods that Firebase Cloud Messaging gives us, such as get token and on token refresh. And when, when these are executed, a token request is then sent to the Firebase Cloud Messaging server. Firebase Cloud Messaging will essentially do some dirty work for us. It will um, it'll essentially reach out to this Apple push notification service and Android's equivalent and get their own tokens from them and then it'll basically then send you back a a single token that would represent you know whatever respective service you're using whether it's iOS or Android um, so we essentially just get back a single token and that's all we care about we really don't care about a lot of the stuff that happens behind the scenes from uh, Firebase Cloud Messaging um, but it can be good to understand. Now that we have that device token, 
we're going to want to save that somewhere. Um, so a token is generated and sent back to the user's device. So we can, most people will end up putting that on their application server. They're stored in a database somewhere, such as Firestore or PostgreSQL or, or whatever you're using. Um, I've also seen people use it. I've seen people use it just stored on the on the user's device. That's also an option as well, but I would recommend putting it on your server. Now, once you have it on your server, you're ready to send push notifications to them. So th now that we've gone over the device token registration, I'm going to stop for a second and I'm going to show you how push notifications are structured. Now Firebase Cloud Messaging categorizes their messages into two different types of messages. One is called notification messages. The other one is called data messages. Now when we think of a stere stereotypical push notification, this is what a notification message is according to Firebase Cloud Messaging. This, if it were sent to a user's device, it would show up in the notification pan unless the device is in the foreground, which is something I'll get to later. Um, but it would show up in the notification pan and you know it, it would vibrate or, or, or make, a, make a sound uh, to let you know that it's there. And then you can look at it and then interact with it. Data messages do not go to the notification pan. Uh, these are mostly meant for behind the scenes work. And, and this is really out of scope for this video and, and all the use cases that I'm presenting. Um, but it would be something like maybe like a sports app secretly sending a, a score updates to your app in the background. Um, but let's not worry about that for this video. Now within this message, I'm going to go through each little piece. Um, there's three main parts of a message. There are more, but for this instance, we're just going to go over three of them. One is the device token. And this is what we just got done talking about. This is what our uh, serve, or this is what Firebase needs to communicate with the actual device. It needs a token that uniquely identifies it. Uh, the second piece is the notification itself. So, um, it would have a title and a body. The title is is what you, you know, it, that's what a title is. It's, it's the main part of the message. The body is like a little sub message that would appear under the, the title. And there's a few other properties that I don't have listed here, such as uh, vibration or sound. You can customize those. But if you don't customize those, it sends a default and that's sufficient for, for this case and, and really most use cases. The third part about a push notification, which is uh, probably the most interesting, is it's actually optional. It's called the data field. And data, it essentially takes in you know, data elements that you specify, but what you can use this for is in your app, if, if a push notification is uh, pressed, you can essentially take this information and alter your app uh, based on these elements that you pass in. So for instance, if you have a chat app and a user opens notification, uh, you can basically look at you know the user ID and the type. And you're like, okay, well this is a new message. So I should route the user to uh, the chat screen. And essentially that, that that's what it would be used for. There are other parts of a message that are optional, but those are beyond the scope of the video. If you're interested in those, feel free to go out and check out Firebase Cloud Messaging's documentation. Uh, it's very verbose. So now that we understand how a push notification is structured, especially with the data payload, it is now safe to move on to the actual device and what happens when a user clicks on our notification or receives a notification. The first thing that happens is obviously the device receives the notification. Then the first check that occurs is to see whether your app is currently in the foreground. 
and that means essentially you have the app open and you're actively using it. If the answer is yes, there is a function that Firebase Cloud Messaging provides called on notification that would trigger. And this would essentially execute a callback and that callback could take in our day load or our data payload parameter as as well as a parameter and then it, you know, you could alter the app based on that data payload parameter now if the app is not in the foreground the notification is then placed in the uh, device's notification tray uh, so typically when you look at your device, you can see all your notifications that are present and it would essentially get placed there. Now, if that notification is clicked on eventually, these notifications do eventually expire, believe it or not, but the expiration date is typically like four weeks and it, it does take a while. But if they're eventually clicked on, uh, there's a few other things that could potentially happen. When it's clicked on, if the app is in the background, there's a listener called on notification opened that operates pretty much the same that on notification does, uh, but it's just a, it's just a separate function. It allows you to put in another callback that could execute something else, um, and it it also takes in your data payload as a parameter as well, and it can alter the state of your app, present a message, uh, whatever you want. Um, so yeah, it operates uh, very much the same. Now, if the app is not in the background, what then occurs is your app is then opened. And when your app is opened, you can execute this function called get initial notification somewhere in your, I guess in the, in the startup of your app that could optionally alter the state of your app. Um, so if you think about a, a chat app, if you press a push notification from that chat app, the app would then open up, then you would ex then this function would get executed um, and it would check to see if your app was open through a push notification. If it was, you could then feed in your data payload that came in with your push notification and alter the state of your app. Uh, so if it was the chat app, it would open up the app and then it would it could it could use React Router or React Navigation to uh, basically push you into the uh, the chat portion of your application. All right, well, that's it for what happens on your user's device, and that is it for our tutorial. Again, this is just the theory behind how push notifications work in React Native with Google Cloud Messaging or Firebase Cloud Messaging. Uh, I plan on doing videos in the future that would show examples of, of how this would actually look and example implementations. But for now, I just wanted to go over the theory just to show you guys how it worked. So I hope this was helpful. This is what I would want to have seen when I started doing this. So hopefully this does help some of you. Uh, feel free to like, subscribe. If you have any comments, feel free to put those in the comments section. And I'll see you later. Thank you. Bye.